All right, so October 11th, uh, 2018 is a day, is the day that uh, Julie was reborn. It's actually her rebirth day, which is what happens uh, when someone survives a, a cardiac arrest. My name's Julie, and I am married to Greg, and we have two wonderful kids. And I've, I'm a chronic volunteer. We've been um, helping in schools and sporting events and my sorority um, alumni and um, there's a story I want to tell you though about what happened to me. I was volunteering actually at the high school for the drill team which our daughter had been a member of and we were handing out pink out ribbons for the uh, breast cancer awareness month in October. And after we had done that, I walked out into the parking lot, was talking to my good friend, Diane. First, Julie reached her hand out to grab my shoulder, and I realized that her eyes just kind of froze. I don't think more than, you know, two or three seconds passed before I dialed 911. It was, it was very immediate. Hello, Plano 911. I'm at Plano Senior High. Um, I, 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 somebody just fell to the ground and we need, okay. we need an ambulance. All right. Okay, I've got paramedics on the way. Can you tell me what happened? She just fell. I was standing here talking to her and she fell. I saw her um, fall and I, her friend tried to catch her. I knew that the closest person to me that would be able to help and was an adult was our bus driver. One of the athletes run up and say, Coach, a lady just fell down or passed out. I don't know if she's okay. Before I knew it, I saw a man running from the school bus. The coach started compressions and said to get the trainer. And is she awake? Uh, no, she's unconscious. Okay, is she breathing? Um, is she breathing? She's not breathing. Oh my God. Is there somebody else there with you, ma'am? Um, yes, yeah, somebody's doing chest compressions, and we have an athletic trainer just came out. I came out, I saw him, and so I ran to the double doors. And at that time, I think the twin girls, Riley and Christy, must have been coming past me. Coach Foley comes running and goes, get the AED. Is there a defibrillator available? Is this a defibrillator? Well, there is, yes, there's a defibrillator. Got there, put it down, uh, press the on button. It was, it's really simple because it, lays it out for you and right when you turn it on it tells you step by step what to do. Coach Foley grabbed the pads when she said she was ready I stopped she put them on the machine basically takes over in terms of doing a run on vitals. Do not touch patient analyzing heart rhythm please wait. Preparing shot move away from the patient. Shot delivered. And then it shocked her she kind of bounced with it a little bit. I think we all kind of were like Oh man, like, did it, did it work? Did it help? Like, did we do anything to help her? And it ran its sequence again, and it, again it says clear, and then it did the second shock. And about the same time the second shock was given, the ambulance was just parking. The, the things that, that, you know, Jackie and Tom and, and the girls did worked so well that by the time we got there, there wasn't a ton for us to do. <laughs> Once we recognize that, all right, she's got a strong pulse back. We stop CPR and we let her body start, you know, going back to the way that it should be. She may or may not remember it. She may or may not, you know, have any recollection of it, but um, I wanted her to know that she was okay and that we were, we were gonna take care of her. So basically I got real close to her. I was sitting right next to her, um, got real close to her, said, Julie, she looked at me and I said, welcome back. in the hospital that I remember uh, waking up and or at least coming to and looking at the ceiling tiles. And when the staff attending to me noticed that I was uh, opening my eyes, they said, welcome back. And you are a very lucky lady. We were there for about 45 minutes and uh, somewhere in there. And, but I do remember the paramedic pulling me aside and this is when it started sinking in. I don't remember who told me it was not just fainting. It was a cardiac arrest. And at this time, I don't know the difference between a cardiac arrest and a heart attack. 
And so, um, or really what happened. And so uh, I remember Brandon Guest is the, uh, is the paramedic that was there with Julie and he comes up and he says, can I give you a hug? And it was the first, it was the first time that it kind of started hitting me that what, what really was happening because it was so frenetic, is that the right word? It was so crazy, it was so, you know, so much was happening and so much new information was coming into my brain where it was the first time I just went, <sighs> So after getting out of the hospital after a week and realizing this is my new life and um, Greg had come up with a really good idea about how in the world would I have been saved if there wasn't an AED nearby and somebody knew where to get it. I look at my phone and I'm like, why is it that I can look up and ask uh, my f smartphone, you know, Google or Siri, you know, where the closest Starbucks is? But I can't do that with an AED. To me, it just seemed crazy. My mission was to, to uh, have AED locations listed as a searchable item on your smartphone. I went to uh, change.org, signed up, wrote my story, took a couple pictures, and uh, put it out there on Facebook. And I tagged friends and family. And, and this change.org just kind of took on a life of its own. I mean, it, it, it quickly, you know, you'd hit refresh and another 200 would show up, would, would sign up. Um, hit refresh, another 50 would be signed up within you know, a couple of minutes. Then a local news station caught on our story and they did a story about our mission. Um, so that gained even more traction. So th it was just this snowball effect that started happening. Doug, most of us are familiar with where AEDs are in familiar places like work. Ours is here in the break room. But what about places that you're unfamiliar with? The couple that we spoke to tonight says they're trying to make that information easily accessible on your phones. It was a life or death moment at a Plano High School when a woman suddenly collapsed. Doctors say that she was dead for at least five minutes, but is alive today thanks to a group of bystanders who had the courage to help. They all worked together to resuscitate a woman before paramedics even arrived. The Winkler twins had just been certified for CPR and first aid at school. Thanks to the efforts of the twins and coaches, Julie Kuhn is expected to make a full recovery. Fox 4 Santa Bataz live with the story. Good morning, Hannah. Yeah, Tim and Lauren, good morning. We are live at Medical City, uh, City Plano. And so far, more than 300 people have signed the petition. So with the momentum we were getting from um, all the media coverage and interest from getting the word out there to get AEDs locatable, Greg and I decided that the best thing to do would be to start our own charity, a charity that would be focused on this mission and we called it Cardiac Crusade because we were on a mission to get AEDs locatable and easily accessible so that they can save lives. So what can you do to help? First, share this video on your social media and go to our website, cardiaccrusade.org and sign up for our newsletter. While you're at the website, go ahead and sign up to be a Cardiac Crusader. Cardiac Crusaders will help identify and verify AED locations, and they are essential to our mission. Finally, donate. All donations will help with our mission to help save lives. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you.